everybody and welcome to the bro show i'm your host jeff lawrence um and this is bro show number two second episode we have a few very special guests coming on this evening Okay, Rabbi Akum and Carrie Cool Trip. We're waiting for Carrie, Carrie Cool Trip now in the studio, but having some technical difficulties. And later on, we'll be bringing on a special cameo. There'll be a special cameo appearance from a special guest who is a Montreal comedian, good friend of mine. Um, and um, we will be uh, chatting with her in the stream later on in the show. So how is everybody doing tonight with this pandemic pandemonium? You know, um, you know, um, well, to get ready for uh, tonight's, uh, this evening's um, show, um, I drank a pint of Corona. Um, <laughs> And um, I find uh, drinking more wine than usual. Um, I'm getting a lot of exercise uh, indoors, not going on much. And it's very cold here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, where I'm streaming from. And uh, so I'm getting a lot of exercise, walking sideways around my apartment, bumping into walls, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, the thing thing about getting old is um, getting up out of the bathtub is um, becomes a water sport. <laughs> um, and um, anyways, um, and also. Um, yeah. So, um, how do you like your president, Joe Biden? Touchy feely, Joe Biden. Um, you know, I heard he was a very good student in college. He took the course, um, mis um, massaging, shoulder massaging 101, and he aced it. <laughs> and, uh, um, Okay. Um, and uh, anyways, um, your uh, president, who uh, Trump, who wrote the book um, uh, "The Art of the Deal." In Canada, we say sorry a lot, so our prime minister wrote his own book, it's called The Art of the Apology. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, my, my, um, my wife and I um, have an asexual relationship. Um, I'm uh, I'm asexual pervert, and uh, she doesn't want to hear about it. <laughs> but we do have an open relationship. Uh, the door always stays open as long as I don't uh, piss her off too much. Um, okay. And uh, that's it. Don't rush in all once, folks. Oh, we have one viewer. One viewer. And uh, feel free to comment at any time, folks. Don't all rush in at once. No hurry. No hurry. It's just a bro show. Wearing my bro beads, you know. And uh, that's it, um, you know. The um, thing is, if you bomb on Zoom, it's like, <laughs> you can't, it's, it's not the same thing as bombing on stage, you know. It's just like, it's the same as having a podcast. I mean, if you're doing a comedy act and you're bombing, I mean, it's just like, um, well, you 
you know, you did a five minute, seven minute podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Thing is, when doing stand up comedy as stand up comedian, like you can be ghosted like um, 25 times. <laughs> and uh, Zoom ghosting is easy, you know. Um, you know, especially after uh, having a few uh, vodkas, you know, I'm not being able to get on use a computer anyways. <laughs> um, yes, yes, Tom saying thank you very much. Thank you very much for like. So feel free, anybody to comment, you know, send, you know, get your friends, rally your friends, send them around the link, get your friends in here. And we just, it looks like we're just going to have a few regulars tonight. It's going to be a very quiet, intimate uh, evening and this bro bomb show. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was supposed to have a, you know, a comedian. <laughs> this is like, I don't know if you call this bad luck or what. I was supposed to have four comedians. One of them um, came down with a high fever and uh, lost his voice. And uh, another one uh, lost his internet. Um, and another one can't even connect uh, onto the uh, StreamYard stream. <laughs> he was there, but he left. So, uh, oh my God, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but what I can do is uh, I can, I'm going to be spontaneous and um, maybe bring in a an unexpected guest um tonight and uh, i'm going to messenger message her right now and just to make it more interesting and spontaneous and unexpected. Um, and, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. And oh, we have three now in the stream. Three and one like, okay. Oh, yeah. Tom says, sorry, bad luck. <laughs> I mean, it, would, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. It couldn't happen to bro or bro. What could I tell you? <laughs> this crap happened. This is Corona times, man. This is pandemic times. You know, my internet was going screwy um, yesterday. In fact, uh, last week I was supposed to go on to a, um, a, a open mic, Zoom open mic. But... Um, my internet was screwing up. I lost my internet and uh, I, I couldn't, first of all, number one, I couldn't find the link to the Zoom. And then after um, my internet went down, my internet was screwing up so I, I couldn't even connect in any case. And uh, so it was kind of like not meant to be, you know, either it's meant to be or it's not meant to be, you know, so that was kind of like not meant to be anyways. And I didn't feel like, you know, I was connecting all once I, I thought I would use the data from my uh, from my phone or tablet, you know, and I kind of like don't want to like sit on the internet waiting to come on, you know, one of the last ones uh, until uh, you know, 10 30, 11, 11 30 at night. <laughs> you know, it's getting ridiculous. Um, okay, well. Um, we have a very special guest for you tonight, and um, I'm going to bring her on just momentarily. Um, it's uh, Rabia moved to London from America in early 2020 for for her day job in IT and was making her way around the London comedy open mic scene before lockdown. Besides London and online, she has taken the stage in Austin, Oakland, Portland, Los Angeles, and San Diego, where she got her start almost two years ago. Streaming to you live from London in the UK, 
please give a warm welcome to your screen, Rabia Kuhn. Hey. Hello, Rabia. Hello. So do I go right into it or? Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. All right. All right. Well, yeah. So thanks. Thanks, uh, Jeff, for watching me and, and maybe one or two other people for being on the stream. Really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, we've been doing this whole lockdown comedy thing online for almost a year now. And one thing I found is a lot of people still can't get Zoom camera angles straight. Now, tonight we're okay because it's just the two of us. Uh, but sometimes it's crazy. Like you have this whole angle where people join meetings and stuff like this. And it's like, why, why are you coming in with us looking up your nose? I mean, I've diagnosed like two deviated septums now during this pandemic, which is ridiculous because I'm a project manager. I shouldn't even know what a deviated septum is, but then you have this whole angle where women come into meetings and it's like the chin and chest. And it's like, look, don't make me look at your chest. I know your eyes are up there. Point your camera where your eyes are, please, please. Um, and you have like, what I call the mom and the dad. The dad is the person who doesn't understand that, like they know to look at the phone when you're talking to them on FaceTime and they know to look at it while you're talking, but the minute they start talking, they hold it back up to their ear and you end up with this view of their inner ear and have to talk to them about having their barber take care of some of the hair going on in there. It's pretty annoying. Um, and then you have the mom and that's, my mom, who's like, oh, I look terrible. So, and they only allow you to see their forehead. It's just kind of like straight on or maybe a little above. That's all I'm saying. Um, so we're in lockdown in London. I think a lot of places are, but that's so what we've got going on here. So there's really not much you can do at this point um, other than go out for exercise once a day or go to the grocery store. So um, I have the same plan for this lockdown that I did for the initial one which was last March that we really didn't get out of for too long. Um, and that's antidepressants. <laughs> um, it's not really because I'm particularly depressed, but actually I was having some wrist pain and I went to the doctor and talked to him and he's like, okay, let's go through your daily activities. And what he realized was that we needed to lower my libido and that would probably ultimately take care of the wrist pain as well. So that's what we've done. Um, now I am in London, but I am also an expat um, and from America. But when people here ask me, where are you from? Because they hear my accent, I immediately say Canada. Um, it's just, you know what? I'm nice enough. So they believe me. I usually dress a bit Canadian. Like tonight I'm wearing a flannel. And also um, it's been a lot easier to explain Trudeau than Trump, to be honest. Now with Biden, I, I think I'm going to start saying I'm American, but you know, we'll see how all his policies plan out too. Um, when I first moved here, though, I tried to fit in by speaking in a British accent. And I quickly found out the only thing I could say in a convincing British accent was, hello, governor. And uh, unfortunately, that's not how they talk over here. Dick Van Dyke movies led me wrong as a kid. And that's not how people in England talk. So I had to stop doing that because if I tried to speak in a British accent with any other words, I would just sound like an American with a speech impediment. Um, so it's been kind of difficult for me. I definitely have to go on a diet due to this whole COVID thing and being more sedentary. Um, but I've been looking up diets and I'm kind of annoyed by some of them. Uh, intermittent fasting. That's not what I'm doing now, which is just not eating for a little while, like intermittently, and then I'll eat later. It's actually not eating for like 16 hours. And it really just sounds like, cultural appropriation of Ramadan at this point. It's like, no one's going to last doing this for more than a month anyway, you know? So it's just like white people not eating and calling it something else. Um, and then you have keto. We know what keto is. It's Atkins. That's what it was called. It was called Atkins in the nineties. It was bad for you. Um, it's kind of like Kanye changes his name to yay and pretending he's not bullshit. <laughs> he's bullshit. So is keto. Uh, and then you have gluten-free now, actually, I have to do gluten-free, but not as a weight loss thing. I do gluten-free because I can't eat gluten. And I don't understand how people lose weight on it because they make gluten-free bread and they make tortilla chips that are gluten-free. So I'm not doing it the right way, I guess, if the intent is to lose weight. Um, gluten-free is tricky, though. I mean, you can't eat bread, which everyone kind of knows. But you also can't have cocaine. <laughs> uh, and you don't want to ask when you're offered it, oh, 
hey, is that gluten free? Because that that doesn't go over well at a party. Um, and it can be cut with other dangerous drugs. We hear that in the news all the time. But it can also be cut with like all purpose flour. Not a good situation. Um, so I've been trying online dating. Oh man. What's cool about online dating in England is there are guys named Barnaby. So that's pretty cool because we don't have Barnaby's in the U S so I, I like that. So I swipe right on Barnaby's, but there's a lot of stuff that's not very cool. Um, there are, you know, easygoing couples looking for a fun girl. Uh, I'll tell you what, if the girl's too fun, someone in the couple's not that easygoing anymore. So I'm like a no on that. You still have the headless torsos, just guys who only show themselves from the neck down. I don't understand because I do want to have a conversation with someone and with not with their chest or torso. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, I ran out of matches recently. So the app says you're out of matches, meaning no one in London wants to date you. Um, and you may want to expand your filters. So I'm like, oh, I guess I can lower my standards. Um, and I did. I, I admit it. I went from looking for someone within five miles to anywhere. Um, I even updated my LinkedIn to say willing to relocate because I don't know where I'll find love, you know, and eventually we'll be able to meet people in person. Um, I went from non-smoking to smokes occasionally. And this was actually before lockdown. And I'll tell you what, people who smoke occasionally only smoke when they drink and they are alcoholics. So now I'm just dating smokers anywhere. And then the last thing was... Um, like I had the height set at five, eight or taller. Well, five, eight online really is five, six in person. So now I've just changed it to five, four and taller because there's another two inches guys usually lie about anyway. And I just get, give it to them at that point. Anyway. Um, I'm sure you've been great. I'm sure, uh, we've had a good time doing this. At least Tom, thank you for laughing online. And, uh, <laughs> thank you for having me on. Okay, <laughs> laughing on la laughing. Okay, well, we'll imagine him laughing offline, <laughs> watching this online stream. Yeah. And just <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it's times like these when it really is helps to be kind of intuitive, kind of psychic, because mm -hmm. I've had psychic abilities for many years now, and it comes from when I started meditation, nineteen eighty six. I spent and developed my psychic abilities that to the point where even freaked me out, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, um, oh, shoot, what's happening? We're having messages flying in like crazy flurries of messages from <laughs> comics. <laughs> well, check them uh, out, really. It's okay. And, <laughs> and uh, I don't have to look at this one. <laughs> Oh, he's looking for the link. Um, um, to the StreamYard? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. In my next week. Um, so I'm going to tell him to go to my... Go to my profile page. And, uh, uh, I've learned that this is all called admin too over here. They call it admin when you're doing all this kind of work. It's not fun. There's a lot of admin in comedy people don't know about. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. And, um, Okay, yeah, so yeah, so psychic abilities of um, of kind of knowing without really knowing things are gonna happen, but you're not consciously aware that things gonna happen, but you are on some some unexplainable level uh, you're aware that some such and such and thing is gonna happen and you're gonna have to do such and such thing and you if you just follow your intuition and you can never uh, really go wrong. Okay, yeah. So, Rabia, you're originally from where in California? Yeah, California. Uh, I grew up in north of LA, and then I lived in San Diego for a long time. Yeah. So southern okay. California. 
Southern California. Okay. Which and how long were you in San Diego? I was in San Diego for 13 years and then I moved away for seven years. I was back for another two years. So Okay. Yeah. While. <laughs> All right. Um Okay. Um, okay. So we'll be bringing on we'll be bringing on an unexpected, unscheduled uh, comic shortly. Okay, just hold on there, and uh, hold hold on there, Jenna. And uh, yeah. So so what made you decide to up and leave to go to uh, London? Uh, my employer just asked if I'd be interested in doing my job over here to work with clients over in Europe. And I had flown to London a couple of times and I stayed in Madrid for three months a couple of years ago. So I just had been over here a lot and it just, I was a good fit for over here. So, um, I said, yes, it seemed like a cool opportunity to travel. Um, <laughs> I didn't get to obviously, cause I, I moved here in January of last year so. I was here for two months before we were locked down, but um, I figure next year I'll, I'm not, I don't, I'm kind of writing most of this year off, but I figure next year I'll travel in Europe a little bit before I go back to the States. Okay. Yeah. So you're not there. I mean, you didn't like, um, like plan on this being for permanent. No, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, I doubt it. I mean, I pretty much plan to go home. Yeah. Unless something happens and there's a reason I stay here permanently. But right now it's, I'll go home. Okay. Yeah. I see Carrie in the stream, but it says device is not connected. And it's not the first time I saw something like that. So I don't know. What and then that Janet said, please take me off backstage. Leave me. Yeah. So he's... He's there, but he's not there. He's, his device not connected actually to yeah, his device. Yeah, couldn't get um, the camera to work, which is so a bummer. So he can't, um, his camera is blocked, yeah. Yeah, so it'd be a blank, it'd be just a black box, which could be more entertaining or just avant-garde than some things, you know? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, would, you, would, it, would he be able to get audio? Mike, I don't know. If it it's, didn't sound like he. Yeah, Mike, Mike like, wouldn't be working either then. Nope. No. So it would just be very. Um, okay. You know. Okay. All right. So yeah, and how long have you been in comedy? Um, almost two years. So, yeah, it was a goal. I set the goal like when I was about thirty-five to do comedy. By the time I was forty, and that was after wanting to do it for probably ten years before that, and. I finally made myself get on stage and I took a class in San Diego and which you don't really need a class. I think you just need the, like to give yourself permission to do it, but that came through a class for me. So yeah. And then I've just been trying to keep going. Um, you you know. guys are really so conscientious, really. So it's like, okay, we, we have that too. We have somebody like a comedian here in Montreal that gives uh, workshops and some people take a workshop. I know this uh, older gentleman who, uh, He's now retired, retired pharmacist, and he took a workshop in comedy, and he's like, and he started doing stand-up, and he was, he's like a natural at it. It's a very funny guy. And uh, so I had heard a uh, few other American comics that they took, they took classes or something, a workshop in comedy. Yeah. And then that's how they got their start into uh, stand-up, open night. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You guys, I got to give you, you Americans, uh, well, you're not American. I, I can't really say you're American expat because you're going to go back, right? So Yeah, but I'm an expat right now. I mean, I, I'm not there. So everything I had to do yeah. that for, towards America was done over here the last year. Voter <laughs> Registering voters I did over here, stuff like that too, you know. So it was pretty okay. voting over here. That was interesting. Um, but yeah. From afar. Yeah. yeah, everything. It was cool though. I mean, you could do everything, but it was... Um, Due to technology, I mean, it was great, but it's, okay. you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was just about to say, you Americans are um, really go-getters, really conscientious, you know. 
Because I find Canadians are we're like conservative, you know. We don't we're not uh, we're not that entrepreneurial, you know. But here, yeah. because we have pretty much a very good social system, social uh, uh, services and healthcare system, yeah, to fall back on, um, you know. So kind of like spoiled anyways but i won't make any comments about montreal comedians and sour grapes and but i'm just suffice to say i'm very glad to meet a lot of uh americans and make a lot of american friends and it's been <laughs> that's one thing that's been nice about the pandemic is we've gotten to meet people from all over i've yeah. liked it yeah so i'm gonna bring in our next guest, Jana, just in a moment here, and I'm going to message her. Cool. Okay. Okay, so for next guest, unexpected, totally unplanned, totally unexpected, but she connected mistakenly thinking that uh, her spot was uh, tonight. <laughs> Had actually scheduled for tomorrow's show. So <laughs> she's gonna, I'm gonna bring her in this evening since we had, since uh, we had some mishaps three three of the comedians of the guest comedians dropped out i don't know this must be a record in in <laughs> talk sh for talk shows i don't know i don't know what the guinness world book of records is on this but anyways you know you have to roll with the punches in this kind of business so uh <laughs> So, she's been producing clean stand-up around the Bay Area for two years, starting out the highest open mic in the, starting at the toughest open mic in the Bay, Tommy T's. She didn't know till later. That's a tough crowd. She had been introduced by the legendary Tony Sparks himself and has fun joining Zoom mics around the country and from New York to Honolulu. Here's a gal with a great big smile and loves to make you smile and bust a gut. Please, welcome to your screens. The lovely Jana Kelly. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> so I'm actually in San Francisco right now. I was at uh, Mutiny Radio just doing a set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, what's the difference between a dad joke and a mom joke? Well, um, if you ask me, there, it's a parent. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Days. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like boats. Uh, I actually don't have a house anymore. I kind of gave up my rent because it was too much, but now I live on a boat. Um, so I'm homeless, but I'm boatful. <laughs> 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 and uh, let's see, hope floats, they say. <laughs> um, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> I. I love um, the boat because it's rocking. Mm. And uh, I actually have a guitar, and uh, I carry it around just so people think I'm a musician. Um, I am. I just I'm learning guitar. <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah, I uh, I am getting some feedback. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh. We've got a skateboarder. Ah, uh, let's see. Um, I, I'm actually a, a gamer. I really like. Uh, like Rummy Cube and chess and, uh, you know, dominoes. <laughs> huh. um, Othello is fun. Um, the funny thing about the bay is that there's a lot of wind here. Um, it helps for the sailboat. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, let's see. What is the difference? between a golfer and a skydiver? Well, I'll tell ya, a, a golfer goes whack, dang. Skydiver goes dang whack. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's this uh, 
thing called Sherlock Holmes, and I like to like make fun of him in this little parody of mine. And it goes like this: Holmes, Holmes saves the day. Moriarty couldn't get in his way. Watson helps him out, and Miss Hudson sits and pouts, for she saw Yin and Yang get away. <laughs> Holmes, Holmes is the man whose stratagem is always the best plan. He loves to collude, especially when he acts rude, for he works best as an unhealthy dude. <laughs> the funny thing about um, that also is that, uh, do you remember Abbott and Costello's Who's On First? There was a mm-hmm. spin-off mm-hmm. that never aired, and it's called Doctor Who's On First. Sherlock's on home, Watson's on second, and Ricky Gervais is on short, shortstop with, I don't freaking care. <laughs> 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 it's kind of fun to like put all these different people from different generations together. Um, like, I don't know, um, if you, if I had a million dollars, I might buy you a, a green dress, but not a real green dress. That's cruel. Um, <laughs> 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 but you know the funny thing about um that is i i like uh poison ivy a whole lot more than um rogue and you know why because i like to go green and i'm californian <laughs> <laughs> um the funny also thing about the um little red riding hood is that she can never date the wolf because Rogue could never date Wolverine, she'd take his power, you know. So, she'd be a healer. <clears throat> Anywho, um, Batman and Spider-Man have some similarities and differences. So, one of the differences is <clears throat> that um, Batman is very rich and the reason he's rich is because he doesn't as bruce wayne you know um he doesn't spend any money so to get his theme song right he he actually had a five-year-old create it for free you know na 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 batman and spider-man had a similar idea so he got an asian lady to create his spider-man spider-man does whatever a spider can we love you spider-man um but um, Spider-Man, when he gets done with his uh, work at night, he still has his spidey senses. So if something goes wrong in the city, he knows where to find it and he can, you know, run. But Batman has to have that clarion call of the spotlight in his eyes by Albert to wake him up after a long night of fighting crime. So <clears throat> someone else, someone is a, a late sleeper. <clears throat> the dark night, right? Anyway, um, you know, there's this thing called Athena, and she's a Greek goddess of love. She fell in love with, of course, a Latin lover, and uh, his name's Frito the Bandito. And they had a child, they had a little boy, and they wanted to name him. So they thought, let's name him something ethnically correct for both of our ethnicities. So uh, P-I-T-A, Pan, Pizza Pan. <laughs> Uh, so Zeus wanted to come see the child and uh, bless him, and so he gave him a gift. And uh, he said, go ahead, Athena, open it up. And so she did, and it was really bright and shiny. And then when she touched it, it was very slimy. And she's like, what are you giving my son? And he's like, how else am I going to teach my grandson how to throw grease lightning? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Thor, his uncle from the Nordic side, um decided to come by and the reason he was there wasn't really to see the baby it was actually to escape the monotonous of um his younger brother the mischievousness of him anyway his younger brother keeps singing this stupid song thing on the apps with all the people in the universe (sighs) but at least he keeps it low key (laughs) (laughs) so there was this one time this girl was driving too fast and uh, she was uh, doing it in the morning from like 10 to one. And the officer pulls her over at like, I don't know, two, one, one o'clock. And he goes, why are you driving so fast? And she's like, well, there's this new thing that kids are trying. It's called 
intermittent fasting. Um, so when you diet, you got to remember not to grow from your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the funny thing about um, me is I have like this fetish with glass water bottles. I think they're eco-friendly and they're nice. And I had one for like nine whole months when finally it fell and it broke. I was super sad and everybody's like, why are you so sad? And I'm like, my water broke. <laughs> so I'm like a Lyft driver and um, I had a, a person, um, you know, like riders would come in my car and I'd be like, yesterday I had a baby in my car, my very first baby. And they're like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, I had a carrier too and the baby mama. <laughs> Uh -huh. Anyway, it's fun to get there. Go. Um, let's see. Oh. Funny thing about uh, goats or you know burros, which which is a donkey, is uh, what do you call a donkey with grass all over its back? Glacius. Glacius. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this thing called Wakanda, and in Wakanda. Um, they can only have certain people come, and Disney princesses are not an exception. Like, only three of them can, too. So the first one's Nala, you know, the little lioness. And then the second one is Tiana, because, um, you know, her, her roots are back there and um, in Africa. And then the third one is um, Snow White. You know why Snow White can go to Wakanda? Hmm. Because there's all the Wakandans in the tribe, but there's no white. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So there was this uh, coup that was uh, on the Capitol a little while ago this month. And, uh, you know, Trump was uh, playing like Billy Crystal in, uh, mm, uh, yes, in, um, Princess Pride, he said, have some fun storm in the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, last year, there was some statues that were being torn down, which is crazy. Um, funny, strange, I guess. Um, I, and I think uh, Trump's little uh, theme song is, all around the world, statues crumble for me. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so one thing about Trump is that, uh, just the last note, is that he, he likes to have a TTT. It's called Trump Twitter Tourette's Syndrome. All right, well, thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. I'm Jana Kelly. Thank you, Jana, Jana Kelly. All right, we're <laughs> shining those pearly whites, you know. <laughs> You're the poster girl for uh, Keep On Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was called Smiley when I was in junior high. <laughs> Boston, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good nickname for you. So, what's a nice girl doing? What's a girl, nice girl like you doing in a business like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to keep it nice. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. <laughs> You're. Yeah, you're you're like the cleaning lady of comedy. <laughs> you clean it up. You keep it clean. Olympia. You know? <laughs> the the cleaning woman of comedy. I'll clean uh -huh. it. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you this one thing real quick. If I can, I don't know if there's somebody after me, but um, um I'm getting a divorce and I'm trying to keep it Christ-like, kind of an oxymoron. Um, so I made a song for my ex and. If I have a sec, but you want to hear it a little bit? All right, here goes. Wishing you with your heart of gold more love than this life could ever hold. Dream bigger, dream wider, breathe life into your gold. Be more than you know. Just do it without me, okay? 
<laughs> Sing, she sings like an angel. <laughs> oh my God. You really are multi talented. It, you know, does stand up, can play guitar, can sing and play guitar. Unbelievable. Just un unbelievable. You have to you have to play us you have to play us a tune on your guitar. <laughs> oh well I'm learning it and it's not tuned right now. <laughs> oh okay. It's uh, know how to do it. Tune. Okay. Uh, maybe um that's... yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so and underneath that apple pie face uh, i mean underneath that hat is an apple pie face she's showing her picture now with, with sorry i had to tie my shoe <laughs> she has had to tie your <laughs> shoe grinning her teeth and okay now we can see your hair she lets <laughs> her hair down i mean wow <laughs> takes off her hat know. lets her hair down ties her shoe She's got it all. I mean, you know, <laughs> multi-talented, multi you know. Let's talk about multitasking, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you've been doing comedy for how long now? Two years. Two years, yeah. Two a little years. more than two years, yeah. Two and a half, actually. About that. And what made you want to go into stand-up? Oh, it was the economics of it all. You know, as a... As, uh, Americans, we like to be economical. So it was half the price to try. It was five dollars to try as opposed to ten to sit there and listen to all the other open micers. <laughs> so I got up there the first time I went really? my teeth. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, I thought wow, I thought um I heard in New York um you have to pay five dollars to yep get a spot it's in an open mic better it's way better on zoom now because sometimes you might make money and you don't have to put in money to do it this time yeah, yeah. oh wow the really wild wild west of comedy out there <laughs> <laughs> where are you at jeff hey so yeah my story is um yeah i was um it was just at the time when i was having a post midlife crisis <laughs> My mailman turned 40. <laughs> uh, um, but um, yeah, I was, no, really, I was having um, a serious, I was going through something really serious um, just before, shortly before my 60th birthday, a couple of months before, a few months, well, a few months before, I was like all, like, I didn't know what, I was going through emotional changes, you know, it was like, um, um, like I know, like like you know, like women go through menopause. You know, probably you know. <laughs> is that where they not, stop? No, Rabia is probably not there yet. Menopause. Is that no. where they stop talking? No. So, um, so I, I don't know. Maybe it was andropause. Something, <laughs> something like really weird emotional shit. And uh, yeah, it was like I was like emoting more. It was like a lot of emotional stuff. A lot of emotions came up. That I didn't know how to deal with, and it was crazy. And you know, like you know, get together with groups. I was going to um, these uh, spirit circles, message circles. I, I was going to message circles, and it was like, what? <laughs> it was like really weird. You know, uh, I was, you know, I, I was oh, just yes. an emotional break. Where, where are you? And, um, so, anyways, so the story is, uh, I. I used as a segue uh, music, uh, open mic music, because because I also play guitar and I sing and play guitar. I was in a a uh, music open mic at a restaurant, and uh, before I started playing something, I actually opened with a joke, uh, and the joke was, uh, "My friends call me Jeff, or they don't call me at all." <laughs> <laughs> And like when people laughed, I said, "Oh, I might have something here," you know. And uh, then after I did my my music set, and my wife recorded the video, and she said, "Jeff, I don't think you want to see this. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to see this. I mean, you know, if you want to do comedy, stick to comedy, you know." And then, just three days later, I, I started. I did an open mic at a club. 
the first open mic and uh, I did an act. I put together an act and it, it was great. It went great from, from there on. I was um, doing open mics and then I went into producing, uh, hosting and producing also. So you discover other talents. And uh, now with this online thing, um, discovering other um, talents and skills that uh, I had to develop I didn't know I had before, you know. So, okay, well, it wouldn't be a bro show without a bro. <laughs> so we have waiting backstage, Luke Logan, okay, and... Uh, Thank you for having. I wasn't. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared to to have him on. I don't. I don't even have an intro for him. But I'm going to bring him on right now. <laughs> um, Sorry, Nara. So, if you want to stick around, Jane, stick around, um, or uh, or not, and then. So, uh, how you doing, Luke? Uh, I'm good. How's it going? Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to record something here all over the place. How are you guys? Good, 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 good. Okay, you're only you only bro here tonight because yeah. Uh, sorry, I uh, three dropped out. I just got your I just got your call. I kind of or got the message last second. I realized I look like I no, no, no. It's great. Tag team to Puerto Rico. It's, great. it's a good thing I um that was very intuitive of me for to uh, like put it in the messages, put it in the, in the group chat, you know, and. Uh, yeah, that this like you know, I kind of like felt that this was gonna happen. I didn't really know this was gonna happen, but at somewhere I, I felt this was gonna happen. So I don't know. Hey, organizing and producing online comedy is like uh, sex on a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still sex, still great, but you know, <laughs> a little bit all over the place. You just gotta kind of roll with it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, spring. You have to spring. Be ready to spring into action at any time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you get your start in comedy, Luke? Uh, I started reading a um, an, a local newspaper called View Magazine, and uh, it talked about how there was a new movement in comedy. Uh, in I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, so it was a talked about a new movement in comedy about uh you know moving away from some of the crude the cruder low hanging fruit type you know dick and rapey type bullshit jokes uh that you were kind of used to hearing in the in online or in in stage time in the 90s and stuff just like the the most brutal stuff so supposedly it was promising something it was like nah there's a movement going on now everything is very witty and everything is very observational and that that's the type of comedy I've always been super attracted to, you know, the kind of Seinfeld, Larry David, like, you know, seeing things that you, you didn't normally, you know, the, oh, wow. I think that that's funny too, as opposed to just, you know, I've used to go to shows and they would just be all poop and sex jokes, which are great too. You know, everyone loves poop and sex jokes, but it's, uh, it gets a little old sometimes. So I decided to go down and check it out and I became a fan um and then i said uh, hey i'm gonna try this out that was about two years ago um and thinking about my last set or thinking about that set at like laughing at it now the jokes that i told on stage <laughs> thinking that were gonna work and like my whole approach to it um but it never felt like a bomb because i was just so happy that i i got up there and did it so uh it's kind of like chasing the dragon right you're always looking for that that high in comedy you're always looking for that those great pops in comedy so yeah mm. and of course just like any other man you know as soon as you get that huge pop you just you know totally flatten out and lose interest and go to sleep <laughs> just roll <laughs> roll over play dead type of thing you know uh, roll on you, the trampoline yeah were you married before Rabia? Have I been married? No, I've never been married. No. Okay. So, okay. So you've been single all these years. Yeah. Yeah. How, how you find uh, being single and uh, doing comedy? I, I, 
I mean, for better or worse, I'm not the body type or the look that gets really hit on very much. So I just find it, um, I find it harder to get booked sometimes, honestly, <laughs> like in person online, it's mm -hmm. fine, um, but it's fine for me. I mean, I've been pretty comfortable with myself and, and, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of, I would like to be in a relationship, but I'm fine that I'm not too. I have like kind of a pretty full life without, so, you know, yeah, it's fine. I don't have the problem that women have. A lot of women have different problems in comedy than I do. And it's just, I mean, I, I don't know, like, would I like to be more attractive to people? Sure. But it's fine. <laughs> so. Yeah. You got to put on your cool shades though. Your, your, your chick cop shades, you know? Uh, oh, that was Biden. Yeah. That was for Biden. But yeah. Badass, badass shades, you know? Okay. Like, yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm looking for you. I'm going to give you a ticket. Type of thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't mess with me, you know? Yeah, and, that was uh, my inauguration day. It's, Shout like, out to know, it's like the cuffs are going on like any minute now. <laughs> yeah, I could always do a role play thing and maybe that would be a way to market myself. <laughs> like, like, you know. Like this chick means business. She's badass. <laughs> Better not mess around with her. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you want to start getting hit on by comics, just start producing your own show. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In a pretty good way. Yeah, yeah, I don't like. I'm missing out on much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean we're all pretty fucked up. That's why we're doing this, right? Yeah. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Who, yeah. who says? Oh, I want to put my traumatic experiences on paper and go up and have people laugh at them in order yeah. to give me validation and feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, a yeah. Comedian, yeah. And I'm a stand-up comedian too. So I like, you know, I like it in both. I like getting You're, what are you and a stand-up? Sorry, I missed the first. I'm a personal trainer and oh. uh, stand-up comedian so my both industries have been pretty much decimated for me the government oh, took God. Uh, yeah two steamers on top of my head but thank you very much china you know you let let the cat out of the hat you know <laughs> Oh my god. Well, we've done our fair share of giving people shitty <laughs> flus and viruses. Like, so. But I mean you, you know, uh <laughs> but I mean that's that's the karma. I mean, that's really the you know, if you believe in karma, it's like really the karma that you that the government's getting for um you know bombing the drones all the drones and starting so many wars and the bombings and and taking over a third world country overthrowing third world governments you know <laughs> yeah the americans have done a couple coup d'etats in their time so <laughs> maybe it's about time they had one that was pretty public it wasn't the first one yeah. i think uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but i mean it's kind of funny how we kind of shift from yeah you know, we, we have the freedom to shift from being Christians to being pagans to being like whatever we want. Whatever month it is, we can celebrate Halloween. We can celebrate Christmas. I especially like how we like to ram Christmas down immigrants' throats. Like, you are going to celebrate this because it's fun. Yeah, yeah. And it's American, you know. <laughs> it's un-American not to celebrate Christmas. Why, and shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And buy presents and and go to a Black Friday and 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 go to um, the the um, the, um, the go the next day to the, the uh, Christmas uh, sales, you know. The, yeah, it's like, hey, you see this company that's uh, putting your manufacturing industry out of work. The reason why you're laid <laughs> off now, go buy a TV from them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Capitalism. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the big, yeah. I mean, big yeah. socialism fear, but yeah, it's stupid. Uh, the big C word. Yeah, yeah. Amazon really had to suck it up. I'm telling you. <laughs> I feel like um, the whole world is almost like the stock market is. It's pretty much like, you know, Tom Cruise in in uh, Rain Man. 
taking taking uh what's his name to the casino and gambling you know because like Mark zuckerberg d you know uh jeff bezos mark zuckerberg uh elon musk like these guys are all obviously super on the spectrum and do not give a shit about what they create or what they put out into the world and everybody's just investing making billions of dollars off of them so i mean mm -hmm. elon musk made a super soaker flamethrower for fuck's sakes to make money it was like dude just some things keep in your mind like you don't, <laughs> you don't need to invent some things you don't need to invent something yeah. that's for sure going to be used by some yeah. kid in africa to burn down his yeah. village that's next to him yeah they just have a, a mind spasm and then and then you see the stock market jump and then you know <laughs> And yeah, let's give this psychopath cost. that doesn't care about human life whatsoever billions and billions of dollars. So uh, we can go the to the space. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the psychopaths. You know, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I I like I discovered I was on the spectrum of Asperger's all my life. And so okay, that's why it was so fucked up. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, we we just went through the meat grinder. We just ended up on the other side. They were like, yeah, oh, yeah. "You fucking suck at this." So you're gonna go in the special kids class because you. you know, it's so yeah, um, it's not like I have learning disabilities. I I had abilities that I was never really aware of, you know, and. Uh, you know, um, but um, you know, growing up with with around kids who were very much into sports and uh, like super athletes, I was I was kind of athletically disabled, and I was um, teased and tormented for years because of it, and uh, bullied, and and I went through so much crap uh, because of it. You know, and it, you know, it sort of plays with your mind because I was more like the nerdy brainy type, you know, and, uh, and these guys were the jocks. Uh, these are the guys I, I hung up or I hung up or I hung around with, uh, in school, these like jock types who, you know, like school wasn't really their forte. They were, you know, they were so great at sports and, uh, you know, and some of them like, okay, well, you know, you're going to be a doctor like your father. You're going to go into your father's business anyway. So what the fuck? Who cares? You know, <laughs> and well, actually I had one friend who was, his father paid him to stay home. His father actually paid him money not to go into work. That's how much of a fuck up he was. <laughs> well, they'd still have jocks and, you know, bullies and all those people. They're just called Instagram influencers now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I was having an emotional. I was speaking like I was speaking with Jenna before, you know, at the time, just before the time I I did my first open mic and it started into stand up. I was I was going through an emotional breakdown, and like weird things were happening to me because uh, I said, "What the fuck? Now I I'm I'm turning sixty. I can't do sixty. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this is a cruel joke." And I remember I was like. And I went to I went, so I went to the doctor for some for some problems with my back or something, and uh, I was remember I was um, I was like my my back seized I couldn't like I was having trouble walking it was like terrible, and uh, I was in I remember I was in a pharmacy and waiting for a prescription and uh, talking to my wife on the phone. And I was crying on the phone. It says, um, "Honey, I can't. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I just can't. This is too hard for me. This is too difficult. I can't do it anymore." And and then, and one of the one of the um, pharmacists, the pharmacist technicians in in the store when sir sir could you please calm down sir please <laughs> get a grip man <laughs> like oh <laughs> i was I, I had a meltdown in a pharmacy that's how, yeah. that's how fucked up it was um 
you know and then i go on, then i then after i go on stage i, I did a, a music open mic and then two or three days later i went on stage that night and i started talking about um that i have like asperger's you know what it's like to have asperger's being on the spectrum you know <laughs> and uh and the fact that they had to put on my birth certificate um under my name son of a merchant you know i mean i've been called worse things honestly <laughs> yeah. so i don't know how my relatives and my my perverted uncle howard you know that story and that that was like i feel like everybody has a perverted college. uncle howard story yeah yeah and that one always you know God. It's interesting how when you like when you're a kid and you know something's really fucked up and that it shouldn't be happening. Like I walked in on my brother and my stepdad reading porn magazines together one time, and I just turned around and I was like, "That's definitely going to uh -oh. need some therapy." <laughs> <laughs> that definitely shouldn't have happened. In yeah. fact, I went and told my mom about it, and she was like, "That never happened." Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you're right. Let's go with that story. That never happened. Let's okay, never yeah. Happened yeah. Usually avoidance and denial are really effective until you're 60 or something. <laughs> until you become a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Until you become an open micer. You got to talk about it somehow. I can't afford 180 bucks an hour for these people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but for me, it was like really, it was like therapy. It was like better than talk therapy. It was like better than if I were to go like in group therapy, you know, like, <laughs> wow, it was like, you know, then I met a lot of comics who needed therapy, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would say stand-up comedy is kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous with a lot less coffee and yeah. a lot more alcohol. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, well, very soon I'm going to bring in a special uh, cameo appearance from a very special guest who's a friend of mine. Who's uh, right now she sent me a couple of uh, comments like uh, everyone knows Howard the pervert. Well, thank you for reminding me, Vic. You know, <laughs> uh, I mean, Howard. Howard was probably reading Hustler like, with my brother and stepdad that one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Just to show you, like, I don't know, my, my mother had an ambiguous relationship with him because she lost, she lost her sister. She had like four or five sisters and, and every, and she, sister passed away and she was sad and miserable and crying, you know, and crying and grieving and sad and mourning. Uncle Howard passes away and she's, and she says, uh, well, I said, aren't you sad? No, Uncle Howard passed away. And she says, no, well, I didn't like him very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll show you how dysfunctional my family is. <laughs> yeah, <there's some> therapy. <laughs> so, um, okay. So I'm going to message her in just a moment so that, the two of you can chat a little bit, you know, and I'm just going to. Yeah. So, Luke, how long how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, just about two years now. Um, okay. So same as me. Yeah. I, well, two and a half years or so. I took a break for a while because I was really not going anywhere. Like I was having a hard time getting through it, and um, I actually uh talk to a female comedian who's you know headlines on the scene and stuff around here um and she just gave me some really simple advice about cutting things down and cool. simplifying them and all that kind of stuff and you know just taking the advice and you know not going up on stage after you have two beers things yeah. like that. that that that's a big one right mm -hmm. cuz I think I think the breakthrough was for me was really just being comfortable in any situation, like, you know, not having an expectation of how jokes are going to go over or what the crowd is going to be like, and that every crowd is like oh. new and fun, 
Yeah. It's actually those club crowds that are easy. You know, everybody's drunk and everybody's there to laugh and everybody's yeah. there to have a good time. But you got to have fun with like, you know, the open mic crowd where there's a hundred comedians and nobody, maybe their girlfriends. Or yeah, boyfriends. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, you, if, you, if you can get that crowd going, you know, you're on to something, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying. I've been enjoying the process. I've been hating the process, enjoying the process. The communities mm -hmm. can be obviously pretty mean sometimes, but you know, um, I can be mean back. So I'm a big boy. Uh, they're they're uh, it, it's it's a very different time in comedy right now because nobody, you know, people are kind of regulating what's offensive, what's not offensive, but that has always happened. I just think that that's such a cop out for everyone. Like if you're funny, if you can't be funny without being racist, then that's you. That's your problem. Then find a crowd that likes that. Yeah. That's what I think. If you can't be funny without telling a rape joke, then that's your problem. Like, that's how I feel about it. Cause everyone's saying you can't say anything. You can say whatever mm. you want. You just have to be able to handle like what comes back to you. And that's what people can't handle. Like they don't want to be told you offended me, then they have to answer that. Yeah, that's what I think I, you're right. I find I find that like, if you tell a joke about something, it has to come from a place of respect. And a place of respect is just knowledge. So, yeah. like, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm mixed. So I get away with telling jokes, mm -hmm. you know, black jokes, but I get away with it because it's a cultural thing, you know, like I can, I can tap into some of the cultural things because there's certain things that I understand. I'm not yeah. just going up and telling black jokes, you know, I'm yeah. not just, I'm not just going up and telling this. It's like, you have to tell a joke that would make, if you're going to tell a joke about Italians, you have to tell a joke about Italians that, that is, is for Italians. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not for everybody else to laugh at Italians. It's for Italians to laugh at themselves. And so, yeah. you know, that's, that's a, that's a trick and you yeah. can't go into it kind of like, uh, you know, you have to just fucking let it out and move on. Yeah. And if like, yeah. And if, if it just gets too uncomfortable for you to tell it, then don't tell it. That's what I think. I mean, I have, my last name is Kuhn. So I have a joke about that because it's a racial slur and I know it is. And it gets mm. pointed out to me. And it's like, I know what my name is, but it's my name, but I tell a joke about it, but I have to be careful of how I say it and what I say about it, right? Like, I can't just, I don't know. I mean, I could say it in a very racist way if I want, or I can like acknowledge what my name is in a way that's funny that people get. And yeah. even that it doesn't always go over well, but then I just accept that. Yeah, it's a risky joke. I mean, it's you funny know? because that right. term actually, that turn comes from cooning which is basically meaning pandering to whites, right? Like back in the day when, um, you know, black people would put on minstrel shows, they would pander to white people. Or, you know, even to this day when they'll say this, you know, this, this, com this comedian's kind of cooning. They just like, they're, they're making movies for that white people like, or they're mm -hmm. making, so it's almost like, it's kind of a derogatory term towards white people. You know, it's a derogatory term that black people give to each other to kissing white people's asses. And it's 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 funny because I find white a lot of white people are doing that now, too, where they're like, you know, hey, you can't say this. This is racist. Well, thanks for speaking for black people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't understand what, it, you know, it, it's funny because the older generation I was grow, I grew up in the. 90s in northern alberta so right. you know i know all about and and i was in ballet so i know all about racism and i know all about uh um you know homophobia and all that kind of stuff so it's interesting when like millennials are explaining to me the way the world works now and i'm like okay well i'm part black i can i can't tell these jokes. like do you want me to pull out my black card do you want me to do the shuffle to prove I'm probably it's like mansplaining but so like it's like ethno explaining or something yeah ethno explaining i just want to make okay, sure look, that you're on the level here <laughs> okay so she's in the studio right now so i'm going to introduce her and bring her on um this is a young lady starting stand-up comedy 
and she believes that babies are bad for the environment and oh, um, totally if, and uh, if you need a lift to for your abortion don't ask her <laughs> I, mean, I mean i mean just uh, or she may uh, tell you on the day she may be uh, she might be very glad to do it and uh, she'll be your your wing lady and I see her smiling there in the studio. Buy you an ice cream afterwards. She's the. <laughs> she makes veganism look easy. And um, she speak to her, and she's very easy peasy. Um, my friend Victoria Blair, please welcome to our to our screen right now. Hey, what an introduction. Wow. I'm like a, a abortion clinic Lyft driver or something. <laughs> you take us to get ice cream afterwards? <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever you want, bud. <laughs> then maybe you can explain to me how you got pregnant in the first place. <laughs> um. So how's how's everyone doing? I'm in my wallet for two years too long. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying earlier that this has to be a podcast or comedy talk show first, when three out of four of the guests can't get can't make it for some for one reason or another. Like the I think the comedy podcast gods. <laughs> must be striking out against me today with one yeah. getting very sick the other one with internet went down and the, the other one with technical problems so he couldn't uh, connect into the screen into the screen this so, is show business baby got to exactly. keep it rolling the show it's goes chaos. on <laughs> got to roll if you got <laughs> to run substitution you gotta on and do your zumba moves you let it rip jeff yeah. Got to roll with the punches and run substitution. There was this almost not the bro show. It would have been the bro Ed show. <laughs> the bro show. Yeah, the bro show. Yeah, the history is the bro show that almost show wasn't. Jeff called the bro show where it's like women are dressed up as men doing it. And I thought that that was, is, that's not the show, is it? Like. <laughs> I think you might have stolen the name Bro Show, or they stole it from you because there's what? a there's a online virtual stand up show with women dressed as men called the Bro Show, and that's what I was looking oh. at. And I was like, really? how the fuck did I get booked on this show? <laughs> now I'm taking jobs away from women again. I don't want to be doing this. Like, yeah. you know I mean? yeah. Because well, I'll tell you the story of how I got the idea. I was rigid. It was like me and. Um, this comedian uh, was originally from uh, Vancouver, BC, or just outside Vancouver, BC, and he was in Montreal. I met him actually in Montreal in McLean's pub um, when I started doing the open mics there. And he just started up in comedy, an Indian guy. And, but, it, but when the pandemic hit, he went back home to uh, BC. And uh, he was messaging me almost, virtually almost every day. You know, hey, bro, broski. Hey, bro, what's up, bro? What's new, bro? What's good, bro? Hey, bro, bro. He's going like, like all like bipolar with the with the textings and and he says, oh, we should do something together, bro, bro. Yeah, okay. How about the bro show? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he'll say, okay, I'll make it intergenerational, intercultural, and absolutely yeah. rational. He says. Wow, that's an amazing idea. So he originally was supposed to co-host with me, the bro show, and then he backed out. <laughs> no, that's too bad. Yeah, oh, reliable bro. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> you know how bros are. So know. the other bro, I could say the other bro wimped out, and uh, I, I. I tried, I looked for someone else. I tried, I did one just with one other uh, indie guy. Actually, he was like, like um, sick. Well, we pronounce it Sikh, but it's sick, like from India. And, uh, but. Uh, oh, Sikh. I thought you said Yeah. Sick. I thought he had I COVID or something. A, <laughs> I thought he had a bad really piece bad of bad. Bad. He's, sick, but he's, not, <laughs> he's sick, but he's not really sick. That's his religion. 
I thought he had some bad butter chicken and it was running down his leg. It was, it was sick. So, yeah. so anyway, so we're just, we're, and um, it didn't work out that well. It was, you know, he was like too sharp for me. For, for a guy who was like, like uh, you know, a little spacey and on the spectrum. And he was like a computer techie guy, software developer and like, <laughs> it just didn't work out. It just this is not going. We're not meshing here, you know. It's not going to work out. And then, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So then I have to go alone, and um, yeah. But I will be having a guest co-host in a few weeks on to uh, on the bro show. She's a broette, <laughs> and uh, so we'll have. It would be sort of like the the, the Regis Philbin. The, the Regis and Kelly show online <laughs> through StreamYard. <laughs> That's cool. It's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. So that would be, uh, yeah, yeah. It would be sort of like sort of like Jeff and Jackie show. And, uh, and we, there we, we really hit it off. So we really, what she co-hosted with me in my other show, the uh, Boomers versus uh, Gen Xers comedy face-off show. She, went, she she did that Thursday night and she said, Oh, this was amazing. Like, I mean, like you know, you kids they say, that was dope. It was dope. It was dope. It was dope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. Hey, are the boomers or the Gen X winning in your thing? So mostly uh, the boomers are doing quite well. I mean, yeah. A, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had um like well, actually, it's half and half. It was all women, all women's uh, that outshone outshone in in uh, last show Thursday night. But we have it split down the middle. It's like two boomers and two Gen Xers who go on to our next show um, that will be uh, streaming live on uh, February thirteenth. So I feel um, like boomers are you know they're the the ones that. They just don't give a shit anymore. Like they're ready yeah. to fight. They're excited yeah. to fight. Um, you know, I, I I I got really mad at my mother about posting on Facebook. She posts all this negative stuff all the time. And I'm like, I'm not mad at the stuff you post. I just mad that it's very unoriginal. You just copy and paste shit. Yeah. I'm like, you're a boomer. You're like, this is you hacky. Have... <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're a boomer. You have so many amazing stories. Like tell stories about people That's getting true. assassinated. Tell stories about, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that you know about. Like, don't just copy and paste some bullshit article from the Guardian that I've seen a hundred of. <laughs> I hate those Guardian articles. I mean, oh, I mean fuck it, I'm so sick. If I see one more fucking Guardian article, I'm going to kill the person who's doing it. I, I'm going to post one tonight just for you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't believe any of this shit. Like, how is it possible for a guy like Donald Trump, who's like legally, like clinically obese, to and he's 74 or some years old to be in like a hundred places at once. It's all a bunch of bullshit to me. Like, <laughs> what do you mean to be in a hundred places at once? I'm like trying to think, what are you talking he's about? In one place at once. There's no way that this guy has this much energy. It's like he's in Carolina, he's in Detroit, he's in. He's yeah, in he's probably in a coma in between those places. He's back yeah. in Mar a Lago now. I'm like, this is bullshit. This guy's probably freaking dead someplace. Wow. They're just using well, two body doubles. That's They're like, using. Got, even Q didn't come up with this theory. <laughs> like, this is beyond. They're using the Baldwin brother that's doing the Trump impression. It's not him anymore. Oh, it's not Alec? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Alec is actually meaner than Donald Trump. That's the funny thing. I would fucking, I would rather get my yelled at by Donald Trump than yelled at by Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Well, Alec Baldwin I mean, like, will assault you at a call. Oh, have you ever heard of the book? Oh, called, dark. Have, you, have you ever heard of the book called Where's Waldo? So this is like Where's Donald? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's nowhere now. Now he's just at Mar a Lago. He can't get nothing, nowhere to go. I mean, he's probably I'm, resting. Well, <laughs> there, of course. I mean, it's going to be, they're going to be, it's going to be swampy. The ocean tide is going to come over and then like 
completely wipe it out anyway and you'll see him like floating on top of a tide you know i said that's what this economy that's what this whole you know 2020 and all this shit has been like even the trump presidency it's just been like one giant tidal wave like just yeah. towards earth yeah. and you know the rich people are like the mer people like riding on the crest of it just mm. loving it and like mm. yeah no idea when it's gonna come crashing down so i'm happy to be a piece of shit lobster on the bottom with a hard shell that's just <laughs> I mean, probably gonna yeah, get the comedians are the bottom feeders under the sea that's me i'm fucking yeah. happy being poor at this point. <laughs> i mean a little money wouldn't go amiss you know i would like to i don't know no you're the happy you like the lobster life I love hey a crab lobster I'm loving it I will I'm there's no current just eating shit off the bottom of the ground off the oh, ground Jesus. I'm good with that they give you guys like I don't know in Canada I mean I'm in the UK and I'm from America and I I don't get stimulus anything I might I've been working the whole time so that, I mean it didn't unfortunately it didn't do anything to me but like did they give you guys assistance? yeah we get we got assistance I think it was like two thousand a month um okay and then if if you were working and you got sick then you would get like a thousand a week for two weeks because it's only two okay. weeks um but that's running out now they're gonna they're gonna end it soon mm -hmm. but it hasn't i haven't gone to that yet because i'm a student anyway so i'm running on student loans oh gotcha oh interesting Victoria lives in quebec which yeah. they've got a lot of nice social assistance there for students and stuff and, and that's you know, cool it's a, like it's a great place if you're poor it's not a nice place if you're a mermaid <laughs> if you're, you're not if gonna you're like disabled, that honestly if you're poor, seriously if you're disabled um this is this is where you want to be you know mm -hmm. like in quebec and montreal because uh we have agencies that they'll send you out people to to help you do things you couldn't do by yourself and and they'll take they'll take care of you like that i have a friend who's in a rehab center and for months like they were treating her like a queen i mean you couldn't you couldn't get better service at a at a five-star hotel <laughs> so it varies by like province yeah like so in, i'm in alberta so this is like the wild west everybody comes here to make Everybody comes here to, you know, we want to pay the least amount of taxes. Mm -hmm. We want to make the most amount of money. You know, it's a bunch of oil. There's a bunch of oil workers. It's like Texas. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So the city that I live in is like Austin. Okay. A universities here and there's a lot of liberals here. It's like very liberal. But then at the same time too, we have a ton of, of business people and oil execs, gotcha. and, you know, guys that wear the Mark's work warehouse um, plaid or flannel pants with the freaking cell phone holsters and sounds hot all the time. And they just stand in their garage holding a beer, like just going, yeah, mm -hmm, no, for sure. Yeah, no, you got to put the uh, <laughs> wheels on that bad boy. Yeah, for sure. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this yeah. is it really like, like, you know, like cartoon? I used to watch it all the time, like King of the Hill. You know, like this, they're sitting, they're standing there with their beers and going, "Yep." And then it goes, "Yep." And it goes, "Yep, yep." You know? Yeah, except golf shirts, <laughs> golf shirts, and uh, you know, F one fifties. Not, uh, not, not, not King of the Hills. A little bit more rural. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's Alberta is a great place. It's a, it's a mishmash of people mm -hmm. who are all here for different reasons. Well, there's a lot of artists here, a lot of mm. people just mm. trying to like, you know, mm. to get by. Yeah. And you've got your just pure capitalist. I want to go to Mexico every year and live on debt people too. So it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Got it. It's mm. quite scary. It's just probably the scariest place in Canada to be during the pandemic, which mm. is, is not really that scary. No, yeah, it's kind of like the wild west of Canada, though. Oh yeah, yeah it is a wild frontier. It's gonna yeah. get worse too. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, you know, um, 
Well, Berta does uh, John Wayne and, and Clint Eastwood, you know. Yeah. And, and, Clint and Eastwood, all. like the racist Clint Eastwood that from that yeah. one movie with that he was a Korean veteran. The Gran Torino. Yeah, he keeps taking his gun out at people for no reason. Yeah. But at the end, he's not racist. Uh, he becomes not racist and he kills the bad guys, right? Right, right. So, yeah. I think in real life that didn't happen though. He stayed. Yeah, <laughs> he just stayed racist, <laughs> racist, grumpy old man. Like <laughs> in Monterey, just like, I mean, uh, we should probably uh, put a part in the movie where I'm not racist, you know? <laughs> 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 like after I talked to that chair on stage <laughs> at some point, I need to have my image a little bit. I am actually very racist, but we'll we'll just let's let's just make it not racist to make it happy. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> right. So in the UK, you guys you guys are totally locked down though right now. Mm -hmm. Like you guys got variants. You've got like variant. Yeah. COVID yeah 27 right now oh like, yeah yeah so like i moved here in january of last year so i had two months of normal ish because it was already starting what in february and then um yeah and then i've just been in my flat like i'm in a 250 square foot studio and that's where i've spent 98 percent of my time since i've been here so you've been in the uk long enough to call it your flat okay. yeah, yeah. You know how to you know how to fit in. You have to fit in. You know, I want to sound Canadian, kind of. So I yeah. try. To... <laughs> but yeah, like, um, yeah. So so basically, it's, just, it's like you know. to the UK, thinking I'm gonna be able to travel all over Europe and all that Precisely. shit. And they were like, Brexit, motherfucker. Well, it, I mean, Brexit. Yeah, even I mean that didn't matter. It's the pandemic. You can't go anywhere because for me, it doesn't affect me because I have a U.S. passport and, and nothing changed, right? But um. But I mean, it's fine. I mean, this is what we have to. Do. I don't. I kind of don't care. I mean, it's like then let's just get through it. And then it'll be done, you know. And I mean, there's a lot of people who I don't know. Like during the holidays, went did parties and raves, and I'm like, that's weird. I mean, you guys, this is your fault that yeah. <laughs> we're staying locked down. It's not the people staying home. It's the people who keep doing the stuff you're not supposed to do. So it's kind of weird. But the government's funny here too. Like they just. I didn't have room to talk while Trump was president, but now I can start being a little more open about it. It's like, you guys are dumb. So Yeah, it's very conservative, right? Like you guys. Uh... Here? Yeah. Um, I mean, the Tories, but the conservative here is like, compared to the US, it's not. I mean, they'd be moderate Democrats, which are liberal. But um, no, they just did stuff like they would wait. Like they would say, oh, in two weeks, you have to start wearing a mask. Yeah. Like, the that <laughs> doesn't make sense. We yeah. like spread this around for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it was stuff like That's, that. And they did the same thing here. They're like, oh, we're going in lockdown in two weeks. We're gonna close the bars in two weeks. Next yeah. month, you'll see. Like, yeah, and so stuff like that didn't. It was like, well, then people don't believe you need to wear one because you're saying you don't need it for two weeks. And if there's COVID now, so I was wearing one anyway because I don't want to get sick and I have I have a thing. I don't want I don't want to get it and. Um, but then like, you know, they would do stuff like have the 10 o'clock curfew. Well, then people just got drunk, you know, earlier. Like, yeah. I mean, that was the th like, it, it just stuff didn't make sense. Right. Um, to most of us, like, it, you know, it just didn't, I had to like, um, isolate for six days because I got possible exposure from the app The app told me, but like, I don't know where, it, you know, or anything, but now it's just all locked down. So I think it's better than reopening and shutting so many times. Cause that just kind of made things harder on people, but they have a lot of people mad because the schools were going to open. Now they're shut. So mm -hmm. we can go outside to exercise and go to the store. So that's been, I mean, I'd say 60% of the time I've been here, that's the case. I just kind of accepted it and made a podcast and do comedy. So, you know, there's kinda... uh there's thousands. I mean, the UK didn't survive thousands and thousands of years by being kind. <laughs> you know, the, the British people, British, the British are like the most successful pirates in the history of mankind. When you think about it, because they're an island, there's no natural resources on the island. They're just a tiny little island, so they had to build ships and go fucking pillage everywhere. <laughs> but you guys, pirates. Um, 
here, right? Without, like, can you guys live here? No, because isn't it still part of the Commonwealth or something like that? Uh, like, yeah, we're part of the Commonwealth, but I don't know if that does anything. Okay. If you have a relative, I think it works like something like uh, that. But I think by the time this is all over with, yeah, I think that every country is going to be just screaming for immigration. Like, every country is going to want to have people there at work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, I know there's probably going to be, people are going to like flee Canada. You think so? Hell out of here. Our prime minister no like, shut down the airlines. He was like, y'all ain't yeah. going nowhere until we collect these fucking taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the British monarchy survived for so long because uh, God kept saving the queen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. <laughs> Do you guys watch The Crown? It's so, it's so yeah. Dark. I it's great. Three seasons. Right. I watched the first season and I skipped to the Margaret Thatcher part. Yeah. And like amateur porn. You just want to get to the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, true. Because there were some, but it's like crazy, right? Like the pattern in their family of just kind of like Harry leaving was not a surprise, like at all at this point. Because you see everybody before him in the same position doing the mm. same. But it's pretty nuts. But the comparing know, how crazy the Edward story is, you know, abdicating, like a person abdicating the throne in the middle of like a world war. Pretty I much know. The start of a world war. And he was a Nazi sympathizer too. So if he had actually, he was actually good friends oh. with Hitler. Had he, had he stayed on and been king, there was a good, there's a good chance they would have just taken over all of Europe easily because he was a sympathizer. Same with the Kennedys and all that shit. They're mm. all they're all a bunch of Nazis. You heard it here first, folks. But they're comparing Meghan Markle <laughs> to Yoko Ono. They're saying they, they make these strange comparisons of Meghan Markle to Yoko Ono. I mean, I would have left too. You know. You know? <laughs> yeah, except I'm gonna give John Lennon the talent edge. I'm gonna give Meghan Markle the talent edge over Yoko Ono. I actually kind of like uh, I like that lawyer show she was on. Oh, suits, suits. Oh yeah, suits. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. like it was kind of like the two thousands version of Mad Men. Yeah, it was so addictive. I would stay up to one o'clock in the morning watching Suits every night. It was like. <laughs> It's like, this is just as sexist as Mad Men. I don't know why everybody likes this so much. I'm like, this is like, yeah. well, I didn't see it. Anyway. It is very interesting. It is very sexist. So if you're not in the mood to, you know, watch that like, in action. Is like, it? But, I mean, Mad Men was on purpose because that was the time. But it's just, it's kind of like sexist and you would think it wouldn't be. Suits uh, and no suits i think it's just like it's just all the characters are men okay all the story revolves around men and the girls are all in like pencil skirts and you can like the, the camera pans to like their asses mm. and stuff like it's just really? <laughs> the, i feel yeah. like the director maybe is sexist more than the the writing i don't know interesting i'll have to see it there's i, I never watched it a yeah, but there's a woman lady boss there <laughs> later on in later seasons, the, the, yeah. that that woman took over the firm, and she and she was the you know real hard ass bitch. <laughs> yeah, mm. but I haven't watched the later seasons. I got uh, I, mm. I I got a little bit bored, but I'll go back to it eventually. I don't. Know. Mm. Everything's sexist, anyways. I don't. Know. So yeah, I mean, they get yeah the hard ass bitch stuff. It's like women get. They, they say women have resting bitch face, but they don't have anything for like I've seen men that have are really mad all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you call that, like resting marriage and rest of face. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like, oh poor guy. He's so he's got so much going on and then a woman does it. It's like, oh look at her. It's like give me a break. <laughs> You're not allowed to be mean. Yeah. Yeah. Men are only oh, allowed yeah, to yeah, be yeah, angry, yeah, yeah. and women yeah. are not allowed to be. Yeah, angry. but when women, yeah, uh, then when women get all angry and aggressive, says, "Oh, oh no, 
you can't do that. No, yeah. who said you can do that? I didn't give you permissions, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the children, like they're AI Android robots, you know? They don't have the permissions to, to have these emotions. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I, I, men are quite stupid. You know, I think men really, you know, even my own friends, like I'm fucking frustrated because they act like a bunch of dumb fucks. One of my friends is, is like a real stupid, fucked up mental case, you know. And <laughs> you sound do angry. Drugs, doesn't do alcohol, you know. And, <laughs> you know, I was speaking with a friend this afternoon and, and it's like, yeah, it's fucking funny because <laughs> Just this afternoon, they were saying, "Yeah, well, Jimbo says there's uh, one we call Jeff more often." He says, "Well, we don't really have that much in common." Yeah, I call him once a week to make sure he's still alive. We don't have much in common. Yeah, this is this is all that piece of shit. <laughs> it is a guy I've known for like 30, 35 years. Like, fuck. <laughs> Oh, dorky Tom piece of shit. resting resting dick face i like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Remember that stolen tom <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> hmm. but <laughs> it's just that's the first time I've seen that. oh tom's still there wow yeah tom yeah tom's still still here in this in this watching this stream yeah, but I mean, it's not just like, I mean, if it was just his face, maybe it wouldn't be so bad, you know, because I'm not going to like, you know, look at him all the time. It's like the stupid things and stupid questions that come out of his mouth, you know, like yeah. talking to him. I'm talking about he could he doesn't get StreamYard, you know, he had like 15 questions about StreamYard. And then I find myself like he's like, uh He's asking, like I'm giving, I'm, I'm telling him things and he's still an, asking the same questions that I thought I answered like four questions ago. You know, are you about your shithead friend or is this about Tom? Are we talking shit it's, about Tom? I just think it's Tom. Your her face that says hashtag like, resting dick face now. You need to listen, Tom. All right. <laughs> he's answering all your questions. No, 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 no. no. Don't put this on Tom. No, 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 no. I thought you switched gears to Tom. No, no, no. I'm still. This. It's like, oh, he must be gone now. Let's talk shit about him. Still on my demented. Uh, Stupid, stupid friend, uh, you know, who's miserly and, and very, you know, here's a guy, you know, here's a guy like 20, 25 years ago, we're, we're going out clubbing and a guy is always, is, like, the reason why he, he was anti-marriage because he says, well, you got to be making at least hundred thousand dollars a year to get married because you know you're gonna, the woman's going to want money. Then you have kids, and they're going to want money. And it's, it's too expensive. I don't want to get married. Yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of uh, guy he was. <laughs> is he a rabbi? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a great is rabbi. A rabbi. That was a great rabbi voice right there. <laughs> I don't mean to sound anti-Semitic, but <laughs> but I mean. Yeah, talk about that. My, my friends, my other friend says um, he gives Jews a bad name because he's so cheap. You know, <laughs> I mean that's like I says. Then I says like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna contact Wikipedia for a new definition. If someone puts in cheap Jew, here here's his picture. You put it in. So every time somebody punches in like cheap Jew, his picture will come up. That's what you know. That's what a cheap Jew looks like. You well, know? I love buying stuff off of like online off of people. And I can mm -hmm. always tell when it's like somebody from the Middle East selling it because it's like going out of business. Yeah, <laughs> they're really chatty about the price. You know, they really explain, <laughs> overly explain, overshare about like what's going on. Yeah, it's <laughs> like it's like uh, if you ever seen Schindler's List when they're like in the middle no. of like being. You know, like all all the all the Jewish people are being rounded up and put in the ghetto, but they're still doing business deals. They're like meeting inside of a church. I was like, if they had an app for that, they would call it Kajuji. 
<laughs> You're really towing the line there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's walking on the line. Yeah. It's not it's not it's not pejorative towards Jewish people though. It's just a play on the Kijiji word. Well, I've been trying to make a joke well, with Kijiji for years. I'm still going for it. Actually, <laughs> I started with like they should change the name of Tinder to Kijiji because everybody I meet on there gives me the Hebe Kijijis. <laughs> I just cannot I cannot make this joke work on stage. It's like the fucking bane of my existence, but I should <laughs> tell it because I like I like it. It's mm -hmm. good. You should just give examples after of why they are giving you the Hebe Kijijis. You know? Yeah. Well, it's for cheap people. Kijiji is for people who just want or just don't have very much money, don't want to spend that much money. And hey, for, I use know. Kijiji. <laughs> what is? <laughs> well, I mean, you have a good. You're a stu. You're you're a struggling student. You should use Kijiji. <laughs> That's how I found my apartment. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah. So I mean, don't try to never try to to get business or or think you're gonna like to make money taking out ads on kijiji if you're in the business and you're looking for clients forget it you're gonna yeah. you may lose money you're not gonna make any money but <laughs> luke you could say like the non-paid version of tinder or something like that right like mm -hmm. add something around the fact that you don't pay and that's you end up on kijiji you don't yeah. pay for tinder you can people do I don't. People yeah, do. I'm so glad I have a boyfriend. When they, when they tease you, <laughs> with, uh, this person likes you. Do you want to find uh, out who it is? And I'm like, based on the other ones, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like Bumble. They'll they'll say, you know, this person swiped right on you. That means that you swiped left on them. So you're exactly. Not in them, but hey, you want to ruin their life and. It's like, hey, like did you did you lower your standards? Or are you? <laughs> This person likes you. I know you don't like them. You're not sexually attracted right. to them, but it's, it's, that's funny because I actually do th I, that in a bit. I say I lower my standards when I run out of matches, but it's like so dumb because it always is like that. You swipe left, you were not interested, then they like warn you. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I know that's fine if they like me. I still don't. You know, my my boyfriend that I have right now, I met him on OK Cupid, and I swiped left. Left is the one you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. I swiped left on him like six times. Uh, like I kept going through all my matches and he kept popping back up. And the reason why is because his photo is of him running a marathon. Because uh, like that's his best photo of him. He likes it because he accomplished something. But in my head, when I saw that, I was like, I that's too, that's too much. I'm not going to be able to keep up with this guy, you know? <laughs> too, he runs a marathon. too athletic, too much of a jock. Funny yeah, though. exactly. But he probably doesn't thought, run anymore, so. I probably thought he would, he would take you out jogging every morning and you'd have to run. Uh, we just watch series him. together. <laughs> I actually get that from women, too. When, like, you know, after the first time that we sleep together, they'll they'll say, like, oh, I thought that you, you were going to be super ripped because you're a personal trainer. So I was happy that, you know, I was like, you were happy what? Well, just that you're not, you know, super ripped. Yeah. Like you've God. got nice muscles and everything, but you're not like super ripped. And I'm like, <laughs> Thanks. cool. I'm it's glad that, you know, a weird body you shaming. Me and you felt better about your body dysmorphia <laughs> by making yeah. my body dysmorphia worse. Thanks. That's, <laughs> that's such a weird thing to say to someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not as in shape as I I'll get to it. Oh, you're a comedian. Don't you know? You better not say anything that happens between us in one of your shows. You know. Well, how hard is it not to do something so fucked up that I could use it on stage <laughs> to entertain a crowd of people? <laughs> like if you do something so fucked up that it will make a crowd of people laugh in a bar, and I can get paid for it. Like I'm 100% telling that story. <laughs> I get the opposite. My mom, she's always like, you can use this in your stand-up. Like she'll do something or say something that's like mildly amusing. And she's like, you can use it. Any of this you want to use, use it. And I'm like, I, I don't this is not <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> that's a thing. You kind of get like a nose for when somebody's trying a bit out. And like oh. I was 
very guilty of this in my first year of comedy because you're just like writing and writing and writing and writing you don't know what works or you don't know how to edit it you don't know anything like that so like you're trying to set it up in conversations and it sounds like a bit and everybody yeah. just smells it and they're like oh, it stinks so i have a friend who, again you know i have a friend who sends me bits and i'm like I'm like, and I always just write, yeah, you should try it out on stage sometime. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not trying that out on stage. It's not funny, and it kind of sounds like an old white man trying, <laughs> yeah. trying to be funny and you not immediately lose all of the funniness of it when it's like, mm -hmm. hey, wait, wait, wait. Like, tell me, you, tell me if you think that this is the case. So, like, you know, <laughs> I'm i'm at work right and there's this guy and this guy like he stinks and it's like it's already not fucking funny at all it's already the like i cannot wait for this story to be over like it's yeah. the worst story i've ever heard because i'm yeah. expecting to laugh but you're like leading into it so badly you become <laughs> it's funny because you become like you can't help but become a prick when you're a comic because yeah it's like, you you know you know what works you have a great idea of how to like cut it down and how to get the jokes really good so yeah. when people start telling a joke like yeah so i went down to the bar the other day and uh saw my friend mike and uh and it's like oh fuck. please <laughs> you just become such an asshole you know it's well yeah well yeah that's where the fake laugh comes in handy i don't know if you guys have a fake laugh oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, my fake comedy. yeah. <laughs> that's my fake comedy club yeah. laugh yeah. yeah 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 you gotta you gotta fake laugh but i mean it's like but it's it's very weird like for someone the comedian with asperger's you know on the spectrum and watching other people's acts like in the first few months that i went to, when i went to the bar like you know this bar the blue dog we have this bar called the Blue Dog Motel Bar, the Blue Dog. So we have we had open open mics there every week, and I went to one, and uh, I think that was bef like before I, I actually got on there at that that bar. But um, and I watched a couple of comedians. One one comedian, one wo woman comedian, who like yeah, she was good. I mean, uh, and she's telling bits and just. I mean, this, that good potential shows a lot of potential. This, she did a joke. I mean, this joke has potential of being hysterically funny. I didn't find it that funny. People were laughing. I don't know. So I didn't find it that funny. But said, this joke has the potential of being hysterically funny. She screwed it up. And it's kind of like him and, and, and one other experienced comedian. It's just like, I feel like I'm sitting, I'm watching train wrecks. Like, oh, my God. God, they just missed the boat. And and I then when I went up there and said, look, why don't I just change it? I think it'd be funnier if you change it to say it this way. And the reaction was, Well, you could tell it this way. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, so I was a guy. Her material to make it funnier. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> There was a guy that would give people notes. Like he would write, he would be there and he would write on paper his suggestions and hand them at open mics. And you're like, fuck you. You know? What? <laughs> like he, he would, would literally. He would just feed you one-liners. Like... No, like he would give you notes on your set. Oh, that's helpful. And he, it was like not even funny. He wasn't funny. And so they yeah. oh, do this and you're like, no, no, I shouldn't. Like, there's like, I'm, 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 me and a couple of friends are running this open mic, and like the owner of the bar, he has a friend, and that friend sometimes will come see me and explain to me how to run <laughs> an open mic, not being helpful at all. And then he's like, uh, you should have a raffle. People would come if you had a raffle, and then you could like have like perfumes and stuff in the raffle. And I'm like, <laughs> thanks. Or you could have a lady working in the bathroom sending out towels. I mean, I don't. What's the point? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And every time he like corners me, like I'm almost like I'm and my back is to the wall. I can't go anywhere, and he just like starts to explain to me how to do things. It's it's the worst. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's kind of like backseat com comedy, comedic backseat drivers, you know? Yeah. Like, no, you're going the wrong way. No, you gotta do it. No, this is how yeah. you, you don't know how to drive. Let me just this is how you drive. Go this way. Go to turn here. Turn left. No, turn here. Turn. And people who think they, they they know what they're talking about and you know, give you suggestions and think you're giving great advice, but they know virtually nothing about what this business is all about and you know how to get business. It's mm. fucked up, you know. Like, <laughs> it's so crazy. I find it's like we used to. I used to waste a lot of time just being overly, overly nice to people, and mm. you know, the, one of the classic things because you don't want to give back to other comedians, but you will say now if I hear something I really like, I'll tell them. I'll be like, yeah. I really like this joke. That yeah. joke was awesome. Yeah, like being specific about the feedback is really good. I like, there's nothing I hate more than getting off stage when you know you didn't have a great set. Great set. Hey, great set. Every, com every comedian saying that to each other. Hey, great set. Great set man. <laughs> I love that. I don't know why. Never, it's like, I never I... say great set to somebody who gave a shit set. They just walk <laughs> off stage and they give me that look like the little kid who's showing them their shitty finger painting that wants a, yeah. you know, this sucks, it? And it's like, yeah. What are you doing now? You get a beer or something? Like, I don't, I never say great <laughs> set anymore. It's a bad set. Because I, think money, cool I just thought of a guy, why do you want, why do you young want guy, comedian. A shit I'm set like, have people tell you that it was good. You're going to go give the same shit set again. You know? Yeah. But, I, I feel like it's fun, though. I like receiving, like, when I bomb really hard and I'm like, I'm going backstage, I'm like ashamed of myself, and people come say great set. I don't know why it should. It's just funny to me. Like they're being ridiculous. You're trying to network with me. I'm an open micer that just bombed. Why are you telling me great set? There's no, nothing in it for you. Like, yeah. How many comedians want you to kick ass? Really? Like, how many comedians on the same show want to kick? Do you? I don't want a comedian to go up ahead of me and kick ass. Then I gotta kick double ass, right? Then I yeah. gotta, unless the crowd is like super into it. But you know, I mean. We're all I don't I, we're all kind of like competition and healthy competition in a way. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It should push you to be better, you know. It should push you to yeah. wake up and, and write and get yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, I miss yeah. it so much. There's one there's one comedian, um, and um, he well he has this bit. He always like like people. He's an Indian guy, and he always a bit about how people like can't get his name right. They screw up his name. So when he's in like um, the coffee shop, uh, Tim Hortons, they call it his name. They, they don't get it right and gets really pissed off. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny, you know. Then he has bits about his sisters. You know, like, you can't think of it. Be more creative. I don't mean to talk about your sisters. Like, eh, well, you know, maybe it's TMI, too much information. You know, mm -hmm. not, not funny. But then he'd end on the same bit every single set about some woman whose water broke and it would be the f the only f really funny thing of his whole set and the whole audience would like almost like die laughing <laughs> sometimes he really gets i know i know who you're talking about he's really good though sometimes yeah. it's a really hit and miss with them yeah i don't know you know you got to um you 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 almost have to like let go of whatever expectations you have of each joke and just like you know do them and we all have our closers you know i've got my joke that and it's sometimes it's like it's a joke that you get mad at jokes that they work so well yeah it's like i just threw this joke in here i wasn't expecting this to work so well like i wanted this joke to work yeah. well i really mm -hmm. like telling this joke and it doesn't yeah. work as well as that one. see so like Okay, I'll put this joke in my hack. You almost get jealous of your jokes. Yeah, like, there's like the super hacky joke that you almost didn't tell, and then everybody loves it. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, in Edmonton, I like I fuck I've avoided doing hacky stuff, and now I love it because it just pisses the comedians off so much because I'm like, look, you have a theater background, you have a background in dance, you have a background in all of these yeah. things, just implement them into your act and do them. So I'll do hacky shit sometimes and mm -hmm. I can tell it like drives the young 
avant-garde comedians crazy and they think it's stupid but i'm like i'm here to make these people laugh i don't give a fuck about you guys or your opinion i love doing lame jokes you know you get on stage and you're like what's the deal with farts or something like it's just it just sucks i don't know why i just love (laughs) jokes that suck (laughs) (laughs) i have a joke about um i miss you know it, it I miss relationships because when you do a chest fart, you know, when your chest squeeze together and they make mm-hmm. that fart sound during sex, like it's really awkward when you're just start dating and you just ignore it. But like, you can acknowledge them when you've been dating a while and yeah. laugh at them. You know? Hey, Sergio, how you doing? We have a, uh, hey, Sergio. Mexico, uh, uh, Hola. A student came to stay with us uh, two or three years ago. And we, 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 we had a, a video chat the other about well, no, last week or the week before with him. And, uh, and he's going to come. He wants to come back to summer to Montreal. A really cool guy with this the cute girlfriend. And, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, I want to get, I want to do a North American thing. I want to do like a U.S., uh, Canada, U.S., Mexico thing show call it the, the the north american free trade show or something something screwed up like that <laughs> that'd be cool get into some mexican comics you know? Just don't build a wall <laughs> and that's yeah. right. i mean no walls and comedy you know uh you know we you know we talk about walls and balls and but we don't build walls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. It was really nice to meet you, Luke and Victoria. And thanks yeah. a lot, Jeff. It's like three a.m. So I'm gonna do it now. Right. Yeah, I have to go as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, take care. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Jeff. See you next Bye. week. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, I have to leave as well. But uh, thanks for having me. It was great. Anyone watching, you can find me on Instagram at Victoria for days. Um, And tomorrow I'm doing the Dirty Four podcast. And Movie Night Trivia. Movie Night Trivia every Thursday. Yeah, Yeah. that's really fun. You can find the group on Facebook. It's Victoria and Claudio's uh, Movie Trivia Night. And uh, the Dirty Four is also on Facebook and on YouTube. We have Vance tomorrow that's coming in. So I like Vance. Yeah. Yeah, Do you like him? Yeah, he's a very cool, funny guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's nice. I like his coffee talks. They're really, I feel like they're positive. They give positive vibes. Oh, yeah. He's, he's very motivational. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. But I have, to, I have to leave. But thank you for having me, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Good night. Okay, folks, and that was it. It's the Bro Show. And uh, it was almost not the Bro Show. I could have called it the Bra Show. <laughs> All women, you know. But, uh, you know, the Estrogen Show or the Broette Show. And so that's it, you know. You know, the guys, you know, talking about you can't get off. I mean, I mean, talk, uh, and when it comes to stream streaming, like it's stream art, literally they couldn't get on. You know, maybe they could get off, but tonight they couldn't get on. Is <laughs> a turn of a phrase? They couldn't get on or get it on. I don't know. But I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The women are killing it in comedy. Yeah. So tune in next week. And we're going to have Jana, Jana Kelly come back and uh, Luke Logan come back and he'll, he'll do a set and uh, we'll bro it out some more with uh, two other great, unbelievable comics next week, February 6th, right here on The Bro Show. And um, that's it. And uh, stay safe, stay warm, wherever you are, and good night.